to where was I? Oh, that's right. Barcelona. Well, shame that Chris Sackleston only stayed for one series, but something even better came out of his regeneration. We got the best doctor of them all, David Tennant. <laughs> Bad Wolf and the Passing of the Ways by Russell T. Davis and is of course episode 12 and 13 of series 1 of Doctor Who and of course the very first series finale of the revived series. So this episode, it was pretty darn hyped. Now of course Bad Wolf and Passing of the Ways tells the story of the Doctor, Rose and Captain Jack are ending up on Satellite 5 which they went to in the long game but this time Satellite 5 has been turned into a... A uh, a mimic of uh, of classic TV shows like The Weakest Link and Big Brother, and so on. H however, as the Doctor attempts to find Jack and Rose, Rose sadly is believed to be killed uh, after trying to escape. Whereas the Doctor discovers that uh, thankfully Rose is still alive. Spoiler alert! And uh, is aboard. Uh, the mothership in of a Dalek fleet that has been in control of Satellite 5 and are, and are about to invade Earth. So the Doctor must make the ultimate sacrifice to save Rose and take on the god of all Daleks himself, the Dalek Emperor. Pretty damn epic, right? Now, Bad Wolf and the Passing of the Ways is considered... It's a, considered a classic and a masterpiece. It's considered... A, Still to this date, the best finale in in the show's history, and uh, considering how well received this series had been, and how well Russell T Davis had brought back this show, this needed to end series one with a bang, and uh, get you uh, thinking, God knows what they have in store for series two, and. Thankfully, guys, this is exactly what this episode did. This episode lived up and surpassed expectations. This is, without question, not only one of Russell T. Davis's absolute best scripts, this is one of the greatest finales in Doctor Who history. It puts all the Stephen Moffat finales to absolute shame. Uh, he should really take notes from this. I, I just absolutely love it. Uh, so, well, let's get into all of the... Uh, many reasons uh, why this is a perfect end to series one. Well, it's such a, a creative idea with Bad Wolf to uh, have uh, the Dr. Rose and Jack trapped in uh, basically parodies and mimics of shows, although uh, some of the shows may be a little dated today, uh, like The Weakest Link and, and Big Brother, because The Weakest Link for uh, did end in 2005, but it, but that's not too much of a flaw because it was a great show at the time and it's still a classic show, we all remember it, and Big Brother, uh, I'm not sure about Big Brother, who the fuck, who gives a fucking shit about Big Brother, I certainly don't watch it, well, well my sister likes it, that's fine, but uh, I, I've never liked it, but 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 it's all right uh, being parodied in Doctor Who. It's it's fun. Meanwhile, Captain Jack is stuck with these two uh, uh, hair cutting robots uh, that wanted to give him a makeover, which was hilarious. Uh, John Barrowman got a chance to shine, and he did not disappoint. Um, I love the design of the androids on Satellite Five. The with Rose on the weakest link, and with. Uh, and with Jack, uh, the haircutter droids, they are both brilliantly designed androids uh, uh, by by the mill. And the weakest link of android, she was formidable. I she, I was scared shitless. So if you lose the weakest link, you die. You get zapped and turned to dust. Uh, but of course, we find out that uh, you're you're not really dead. You've just been transported to uh, the the mother ship of the Daleks, but that's still a death sentence, so when she goes, you are the weakest link, goodbye, that mm, that really freaked me out, and I was thinking, Rose, you've got to win this, uh, or or you're gonna die, uh, that's how much tension there was in the weakest link scenes, and um, the Doctor, of course, is stuck in a replica of Big Brother, and he befriends uh, this young girl who uh, helps uh, him accompany on his quest to find Rose and Jack and get them both out of there and 
and sadly Rose doesn't win the weakest link and she loses to this uh, other guy and and when she does make a run for it you're rooting for her. yes finally the doctor's found you but then the fucking android screeches you are the weakest link goodbye and shoots Rose to dust and oh it was so sad I was crying um and when Christopher Eccleston was brilliant in that scene when he he, he was incredible when he just uh, stared at the dust and believing he was too late to save Rose. He conveyed all that emotion without any dialogue whatsoever. That's a great example of show, don't tell. But, of course, the uh, uh, controller of Satellite 5 is this woman. She's strapped with all these wires and she looks, uh, she looks terrifying, but she's very sympathetic. You feel for her that uh, that's a she's been wired to Satellite 5 and is basically forced to control everything. The cliffhanger of Bad Wolf is one of the best cliffhangers I've seen, not just in Doctor Who, but on television in general. Just seeing that fleet of uh, 200 Dalek ships, as the Doctor said, over 2,000 aboard each one, so he's facing literally half a million Daleks. I'm like, how the heck uh, can he win? Uh, yeah, this episode actually put the Doctor it actually great, a, a greater challenge for him than he's ever faced before. And uh, and this reveal, however, would have been more effective if they didn't spoil it in the freaking next time trailer. But, oh well, that that's a minor nitpick. It's still um, a, a jaw-droppingly uh, outstanding cliffhanger. And... And thankfully, we're all relieved that Rose has just been transported aboard uh, the Dalek mothership, though she is being uh, held hostage. And it's uh, such a perfect moment when the Doctor's just uh, talking to the Daleks and and uh, they are threatening to exterminate Rose if he refuses to give in to their demands. But he just, he does the ballsiest thing ever. He flat out refuses and... Uh, it tells those Daleks, I'm going to rescue Rose Tyler, and I'm going to wipe out every last stinking Dalek out of the sky. And it's such a brilliant line that makes you cheer when he says, Rose, I'm coming to get you. You're like, wow, I, I just want to see the passing of the ways right now. And thankfully, the passing of the ways is not just as good as Bad Wolf, it's even better by a landslide. It, it immediately... Uh, kicks off with the Doctor and uh, Jack in the TARDIS evading the missiles from the Dalek mothership and they uh, they land on the mothership and save Rose and the Doctor is introduced to the uh, god of all Daleks, the Dalek Emperor, voiced uh, uh, outstandingly by Nicholas Briggs who gives him a much deeper, more epic, more commanding voice. They survived through yeah, your your spine shivers whenever he's on screen, and his design is wonderful. Oh, he looks uh, so badass. He looks truly unstoppable and and ruthless. You're like, how the heck is why the heck is the Doctor being so confident? Uh, does he really have a chance? And and when the Doctor steps back into the TARDIS, he reveals that he was just pretending to be confident. He, he literally has no chance in this battle with the Dalek Emperor. So, and he realises if Rose stays, then she's going to die, and he can't let that happen. So he tricks her into getting something in the TARDIS, then he just locks the TARDIS and sends it home. And he sends that, it's so powerful moment when he sends that message to Rose uh, saying... I'm sending you back to save you and do one thing for me. Have a fantastic life. Oh, oh I was I was tearing up. This episode it hits you here. Hits you harder than most. But anyway, as as the doctor and Jack are are battling at the the Daleks on Satellite 5, it's just epic. The CGI for, even for 2005, I'm sure it must have blown audiences away back then. It still hold up brilliantly today. In fact, it's better than some of the CGI in Series 9. And it's so sad to see that the Daleks are, are they, they have the true advantage. They are just unstoppable. And 
no matter how hard this band of humans try, they just can't beat them. All the androids get destroyed by the Daleks, even the controller gets uh, exterminated. So that's ever so sad. And I think even the girl from from the Big Brother parody gets exterminated. Oh, oh, that was devastating. Oh. To make matters worse, uh, even Captain Jack gets exterminated. To make one final stand against the Daleks. He is so brave. He he knows he's gonna die. Uh, he. Uh, he knows no fear, but uh, but he dies uh, with honor. And but if that wasn't emotional enough, uh, when Rose is back with uh, Jackie and Mickey, she's not happy. Uh, even though Jackie and Mickey are so overjoyed, obviously that the Doctor brought her back. Uh, Rose is she finally stands up for herself and says the Doctor taught her something that in life you don't just let your problems uh, get the better of you, you make a stand, you say no, you fight back. Uh, to which she's absolutely right, I don't know why people think uh, she's bitching in that scene, she's absolutely right, we can't just give up and let the doctor die, we've got to go back and save him, so she's uh, trying to open the heart of the TARDIS and and when Mickey's car fails, uh, it's a uh, it's such an unfortunate moment. You almost uh, you almost give up hope at this point, and and there's a great uh, scene where Rose tells Jackie that so uh, she was actually there when Pete died, and she was the girl that stood by Pete. Uh, to which Jackie obviously gets uh, gets angry and overwhelmed with emotions. And I love how Father's Day brilliantly ties into this episode, and and and. and of course we get some resolution with the bad wolf storyline, we find out that Rose is the bad wolf herself, uh, which, which in the big lesser's bad wolf on the pavement, uh, which uh, was uh, such uh, <laughs> which was such an ingenious twist, and I love how Jackie finally comes to her senses and helps out in the end by bringing Rose a truck, they open the heart of the TARDIS, and Rose gains the power of the god by opening it up, and but before Rose returns, the Doctor is literally uh, on the brink of defeat and about to surrender to the Dalek Emperors. The only way he can uh, do it is if he has to commit double genocide and kill both the Daleks and the humans, just like he did in the Time War. But he can't bring himself to do that again, so he just lets the Dalek Emperor win. And, and even though you're like, no, Doctor, what are you doing? You can't let them win. You understand his his reasons behind that. I mean, who is ready to commit a double genocide? Uh, it shows how compassionate the Doctor is, and Rose thankfully saves the day, and this is probably the first time the Companion has saved the day in the Revive series, which is a refreshing change. Rose finally uh, has discovered who she is. She has absorbed the Time Vortex, she destroys the Dalek Emperor and the entire Dalek fleet, and she completely ends the Time War, but sadly the Time Vortex is killing her, so the Doctor sacrifices himself and absorbs the Time Vortex into him. So, uh, And then we get the best scene of the episode, the regeneration scene. And it's still one of my favourite regenerations, not just of the Revive series, but of the entire show in general. Words cannot describe uh, how much you cry to see... Uh, Christopher Eccleston go after we've been with him for one series. So we really ready for him to change? Uh, and he's like, in his final moments, he's nothing short of perfect. Where he says, "Before I go, you were fantastic, and you know what? So was I." And but at least one good thing came out of it. He regenerates into my personal favourite dots of David Tennant, and I love David Tennant's first lines where he says, "Oh, where was I? Oh yes." Barcelona. The passing of the ways isn't just perfect Doctor Who, it's perfect television and a, a wonderful conclusion to a wonderful series. It's an absolute masterpiece in every way. It is it is perfect. It's one of the few episodes of Doctor Who that I have no flaws or even nitpicks whatsoever. I give Bad Wolf and the passing of the ways five stars out of five. Is this the best story of series one? Absolutely. Is better than any series finale Stephen Moffat has written thus far? Yes, absolutely. freaking lutely and it might be in my top ten Who episodes of all time, so I love you guys, thank you all for watching, and what did you think of Bad Wolf and the Passing of the Ways? Please comment and let me know, please like this video and subscribe, please follow me on Twitter and on Google+, and I'll see you all next time, bye guys.